it's me real quick just a quick update um, in the video that you're about to see I said that there would be another update added to the end of this video and I decided to just go ahead and upload the content that I had because it's 40 minutes long and I don't know what my next update is going to be I don't know if it's going to be another half hour or another 40 minutes and I didn't want that lengthy of a video so I think 40 minutes is a good size um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and upload it so when you hear me talking about the next segment or um, the when I refer to the video the giveaway from the last video that will be in the next video that I upload so I will probably just upload a quick segment um, to talk about the video or it'll be part of a video next week I'm not sure but long story short what you're about to watch is a video in its entirety Okay, thanks, bye. Hi friends, um, today is Sunday, August 25th. Um, it is about 74 degrees outside. It is gorgeous. I'm Leticia and welcome back to my channel. So before we get started, I have two things that I need everybody to go and watch as soon as possible. The first is Bohemian Rhapsody. OMG, I just watched this movie for the first time. I was a little bit hesitant about watching it. Um, I'm a little particular about biopics about um, certain celebrities. And I was a little nervous, even though Rami Malek won a Oscar for his performance. Um, I just wasn't ready to watch it. And I watched it this past Friday night and it was amazing. It was amazing. It was a great rep representation of Queen's experience and also just so respectful to Fre Freddie Mercury. Rami Malek did an amazing job. So number one, go watch Bohemian Rhapsody. Number two, go watch Elena B on Flosstube. I will link her below. She is back after a nine month hiatus and everybody needs to go and watch. Um, so with that being said, it's been about two weeks since I last filmed an update. So I am sure this is not going to be the entire video, um, but maybe just uh, a, a snippet to add to a meteor video because you know, the crafty curator likes a chunky video. I like a video of substance and length and that's usually what I like to provide. Um, so who knows, we'll see what we get into today. So I have some whip updates. I have a little bit of haul and I have a little bit of plans. Um, so let's start with the plans that are usually not adhered to, which is fine. It's totally fine. So I have not been following my rotation that I strategically planned out for 2019. Um, and like at all, at all. So I was thinking about that because Bountiful Harvest, I've been working on, I think I worked on it for well over a month. And I was thinking about it with my last video update. I didn't really have much to show you guys as far as whips goes. I didn't have a lot of content at all um, because it was mostly Bountiful Harvest. So. I mostly filled up the video with updates, vlog updates, so you could see where I was from week to week, but I like to show a little bit more than just one project. Um, so that was the main purpose. No, it wasn't the main purpose, but one of the main reasons for having rotation is so I can show love to all of my projects because I do have, you know, I have one or two whips, just a few. Um, and I like to show some love to them somehow, but I also like to share my progress with you guys and typically I like to have more than just one whip to show. Um, so that being said, <clears throat> when I was finished working on Bountiful Harvest, I think I stopped working on it when I um, joined in on the Rosewood Manor Sal on August 15th and that's when I finally put it down and introduced um, something new to the mix. So I started the Rosewood Manor Sal um, which I worked on probably for three days and then I picked up a new project um, and then today was high tea is high tea um, and I'll talk about that 
so I found that I had more than one, more than two, more than three projects. I'm like, okay, this will work. And I kind of went back to that mentality of, okay, I'm going to work on one main project for two or three weeks, still undecided. My high tea projects, um, I think I originally decided I was going to work on the high tea projects that I start or high tea whips that I pull out and work on them for the Friday night party, off the grid party every Friday night. That fell by the wayside. Um, so I think I'm going to go back to that as well. And I'll talk about how I'm going to continue to try to work on Rosewood Manor a bit. Um, so that's a long way of saying I'm bringing back the rotation. A rotation. Some sort of rotation. Also in my last video, I did an unboxing of um, Atlantis by Owl Forest Embroidery. And I was trying to come up with some ideas for that fabric. It was a pretty blue fabric. It was like a nice smoky country blue. Um, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to do Atlantis on that fabric, even though the whips that I have seen with people working on that fabric have been beautiful. It just wasn't what I wanted. I um, was thinking more of a chocolate brown or something darker. But more, the more that I thought about it, I realized it's a very particular cut of fabric. It's a very wide piece. So the fabric that I received in the kit was cut for that particular piece. So if I decided on another piece of fabric, I was going to have to pay for that. And even more importantly, I was going to have to pay for that specific cut, which would mean buying a half a yard of fabric and cutting it in half, which is ridiculous. So that piece of fabric, I think I am going to dye it. I'm going to work with the fabric that came in the kit, but I think I'm going to dye it to make it a richer blue, um, maybe a more of a turquoise or somewhere deeper into that turquoisey cerulean blue family. Um, I definitely want it to be a little bit richer than what it is right now. So more to come on that. I haven't dyed it. I haven't touched it. I'm just sharing what my plans are for that um, because I talked about it in my last video. Something else that came that I decided to change that I haven't talked about in some time. When I was at the New Jersey um, Floss Tube Retreat, Melissa um, picked out her colors for her Dragons of Sumatra. And she's also a floss tuber, and I will link her information below. Um, and I'll actually do it this time because last time I said I was going to link all these things below, and I, I don't. I don't believe I linked anything, so that happened. Um, but anyway, I was looking at her fabric and thread choices for Dragons of Sumatra, and she chose this really beautiful, soft, greeny blue fabric with this gorgeous, I think it was Gentle Arts or Weeks, I don't remember which um, brand it was, but it was a beautiful dark green blue. And they just look so beautiful together. And then she started posting recently pics of her progress on Instagram. It's perfection. Um, and when I was looking at that, the solid color for Dragons of Sumatra, I started thinking, I think I, I'm going to restart mine. So with Dragons of Sumatra, um, I have a significant amount of progress on it. So this was a hard decision to make, but I know how I felt about that particular piece. Um, because when I started working on that project, I used a gray and red variegated um, hank of silk from Silks For You. I don't remember the, the number off the top of my head. I want to say it was PR142. but I might be wrong, but it's like reds and grays and beautiful variegated silk. The problem that I initially had when I first started stitching on it was I didn't like the striping in the dragon. Um, and I ended up one of the dragons, a larger dragon motif, and I ended up unpicking the whole thing at the Harrisburg retreat. Um, and I decided I was going to make all of the dragons a solid color. And it was a great suggestion 
um, provided by one of my team, my table mates, because I didn't like how the striping was going in this huge dragon. So they suggest she suggested um, to use solid colors. So I went to the Hobby Lobby, I think it was, that was out there in Harrisburg, and I got some solid colors and I started stitching on it. I was like, okay, that's fine. But then I was not, as I started going along, I didn't know how I would feel about red and purple playing together on the same pattern, even though they complemented the variegated floss. I just wasn't pleased with it. Um, and I started second guessing my color choices, you know, as we sometimes do. And you're kind of faced with that decision. I've come so far. Do I want to restart this whole thing or do I just power through? And I don't see any value in powering through on a project when you're not happy with it. Um, so I do believe I'm going to restart Dragons of Sumatra in a solid color. Um, and I was deeply inspired by Melissa's color choices because she used such a strong deep color for the um entire pattern and such a beautiful fabric and i used a very strong variegated floss with a plain fabric i don't know it's, and it's just i'm probably gonna restart it so in one of these next updates i will pull that out and show you where i am with it so you can see number one what i'm talking about and number two, um, why I'm struggling with the decision because I've come so far. Now, on the flip side of that, there was a stitcher, and of course, I don't remember her name off the top of my head. She chose the exact same hank of silk that I did from S Silks For You and stitched. She, she's probably done by now because when I saw hers, I mean, she was easily three quarters of the way done. And it's amazing. And it's so funny where you look at somebody else's project and they chose the same exact silk or the same exact thread. And she had the stripey stripey that I didn't like looking at in mine, but on hers, it looked amazing. And that's also why I was struggling. Like, if I keep going, will it look like that? Obviously, it probably would because it's the same exact silk, same type of fabric, but it looked amazing. So... I'm pretty sure I want to restart it though um, with a deeper richer color maybe but I'll show that in another update so you guys can look at it and offer any suggestions or input that you might feel inclined to share um, but I think those are all of the updates slash plans that I had to share um, and I'll go into my whips so like I said this past couple of weeks um, I have been working on a Rosewood Manor style. I started a new project today. I pulled out um, a whip to replace my obsession with Bountiful Harvest. Um, so I just randomly picked up my latest Garon Tilton bag. And what is living in here is my high tea new start. So a little bit of history about this project and I'm going to end the suspense and just show it to you. The high tea project that I have chosen is Celtic Lads by the Courtney Collection. And I'm going to come in on this a little bit. And of course it's not going to, there you go. If you look at it, you can see that there are some boys in there and it's actually not reversible, but you can turn it upside down and you still see a pattern in there but I first saw this I want to say it was maybe a year ago it may not have been that long ago but I first saw this on Diana Diana it is Kismet's channel and when I saw her at the retreat I kept meaning to ask her what that pattern was that she showed but I kept forgetting so when I saw her at the retreat I asked her and she was thinking of something that a friend of hers drew that she thought I was talking about. And I just kind of gave up on the search. And then a couple of days later, maybe a week later, I was just randomly searching online for cross stitch patterns as we do. And I found it. 
So I sent her a picture. I was like, this is what I was talking about. Um, and as soon as I found, as soon as I found it, I knew it was what she had, but I wanted to confirm that it was on her channel that I saw it. And she was like, oh yeah, it's a chat a while ago. And at that point I had already ordered it because I was pretty sure that this was what it was. And like I said, I was just trying to confirm that it was her channel that I actually saw it on. So I received it and I was so excited to start it. And this is my high tea new start. So I actually started this late last night. Um, using some threads that are nowhere nearby right now um, but they were um, a collection of threads hand dyed by XJU designs and the colorway is called bark and it's a very light gray and tan variegated and when I first started it um, I immediately realized nope I'm not gonna want to do this with a light thread which is what I thought I would want but when I first started it I was like no I, I want something darker and richer um, and I chose current by my roll of frame just came apart one second talk amongst yourselves I chose current by gentle art sampler threads which is a beautifully variegated current color it's deep reds and burgundies and this is my start so one fun thing about this pattern is it's very narrow. It's 43 inches wide by 451 inches long. So on 40 count ivory linen, which is what I'm stitching this on, the entire width of the pattern is only 2.16 inches, I think. And the length of it is 22.55 inches. So it's very long. Um, but it's extremely narrow. So I had an entire yard of this 40 count linen and I just um, cut out a fat eighth and here we go. So one thing that I love about this is number one, I can keep it on this little 10 inch roller frame. I really love that and it's just gonna stay on this the whole entire time if I'm not working on it, I just roll it up like that. There is my needle minder from the New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat made by the lovely Kim. Crafty Kim, um, but that's my start. So I will pull this out again every Friday night until the next high tea or until I change my mind and see how far we get on this. Um, and that just rolls up quite beautifully and just stays in my Garon tote bag. This was, um, I think I talked about it in my last video. This was my very first bag of the month from Garon Toten Bags. Not my first Garon Toten Bag, but my first bag of the month from them. And it came with a lovely surprise, which was a matching notions pouch. And in there I house my threads and I'll show you the current, current color from Gentle Art Samplers. Now, this particular thread Hopefully that is focusing. This particular thread, no, it's not. There we go. This came from when I was ordering the nest eggs from Trisha at Three Owl, Three Owl Threads, and I kind of went through my thread stash there to pick out a color. And I chose this, number one, because I really like the deep, rich reds, and number two, because I know I have more of these um, on hand um, in my... Big Red Ship of Life kitted up project. And I pause because it's not, I don't think it's a whip yet. Maybe it is. My mind's eye is confusing that with Dragons of Sumatra right now. So I don't actually know if I started Big Red Ship of Life. Um, but what I do know is that there is a lot of this in that kit. A lot of it. So I have more of this on hand and there are actually two colors in that pattern. It looks like it is one color, but it's actually two. And the second color, like the first color has like 9,000 and some stitches in it. And the second color is like 500 and some. So the, the second color is used very minimally. And I know in that big red ship of life pattern, I have a, contrasting, I was about to say coordinating, a contrasting red.
that I'm probably going to use as the contrast color in this one. So yeah, stitching from stash, living my best life. So that is my first whip. My second one just also so happens to be in my 12 by 18 size Gamron Tilton bag. They have the 12 by 13, which is what I just showed you, which is my, my preferred size. And then they also have the big boy, B12 by 18. Now, I originally had this project housed on a smaller tote bag, um, but then I changed my floss box, this one. The smaller Garon tote bag, just so you guys know, it fits one of those regular DMC or whatever, the, I think it's DMC, one of the, the clear plastic um, bobbins. Um, I'm going to pause you because my phone is about to shut off. I need to charge it. All right. Sorry about that. So what I was saying was the 12 by 13 tote and bag fits one of these quite easily. And I had everything in one of the smaller bags, everything fit in their project, the floss pattern, everything. But then I got this bag or this box rather, and it's a little bit wider. Um, and maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch longer. I'm not sure. Um, no, it's actually the same length, but it's a little bit wider, higher, whatever. And because of that, it, this fits in the garage, in the 12 by 13, but it's a squeeze. So anyway, I switched to one of the bigger bags, which is great fun because all of the seals, right? Look at that back of it and then the inside has this beautiful fabric that looks it reminds me of a swimming a swimming pool I just love that so that's the inside and that houses my bountiful harvest project so I finally put this down and put it away for a little while after working on it for well over a month and here is my Got to move Babs, the butterfly booby lady, otherwise known as McKenna. And there is my progress. So as you can see, the man up top is done. His basket of corn is done. I'm now working on what I refer to as his Hulk hand because I think the hand is huge um, in comparison to him. And I love it that way. Uh, but I call that his Hulk hand. So I'm starting his to fill in the skin tone on his hand. And as you can see... There is the arm of the woman in front of her, in front of his basket. You see her shirt sleeve. Um, you see the outline of her booby there. And there's her arm and I'm filling in the skin there. So I tend to try to work with one color um, in one area until it runs out. So if I'm using all of the skin color here and I still have thread left, I might try to fill in here. Um, but what I've said before about this pattern, even though it's basically full coverage, I love that there are so many large chunks of color that it's not so large where it gets boring because you're working with one color, but it's also not as tedious as switching colors every second because of confetti. And I absolutely love that. And I think that's what makes this, um, so much fun for me to stitch on that. And I love seeing the pattern come to life so quickly before my eyes. So this is one month's work of work. I'm not sure when I will pull this out again, um, but I'm pretty confident I'll pull it out again before the year is out, which will be soon because this year is flying by, isn't it? Um, and that is the second whip that I have to show you. I'll put this back on there. The next whip that I have to show you is my Rosewood Manor Autumn Quakers. So there is currently a Rosewood Manor sale that started on August 15th. Uh, I'm not sh I didn't believe that the Sunshine Stitchers started that. And that sale 
Um, a lot of people are working on Autumn Quakers, but it's really for any Rosewood Manor, whether it be it a new start or a whip. Um, you're invited to play along, but I chose Autumn Quakers because I started this, oh, it was at least a year ago. I started this and um, I did the upper left hand corner motif, part of that upper left hand corner motif, and then I put it down and never touched it again. So I thought this was an excellent opportunity for me to pull that back out and show it some love, and I'm so glad that I did. Um, like I said, I only worked on it for three days, but I got a significant amount of progress on it. Um, yesterday, I went to I had a spectacular day at the beach with one of my girlfriends, and I took this with me and barely stitched on it, but, you know, it was there. It's all the water, all the good things. So this is my progress on my Autumn Quakers. So like I said, when I started, I had all of this done, um, part of this middle part done here and some of this. So for those three days, I worked on these two side flowers, these two motifs right here. It's really silly for me to go through all that. I finished this first motif right here and then everything else you see is what I stitched. Um, this is stitched using Baldani threads in the ball, not the skein. These are the called for colors, and this is on a piece of 28 count mushroom Lugana. There you go. And I will show you what the balls look like in my highly technical system of storage here. Um, I have them in snack size baggies on one of those little cable tie things to keep it all together. And I will show you the little ball. So these are the Val Donnie threads. This is what the little skein looks like. So you see it's beautiful variegation. And you just pull out from the middle like that. The numbers on the bottom. And this little ball of thread has a shockingly, I don't know what the yardage is, but it holds this little ball packs quite a punch. There's a lot of thread in here. So when you're working with these Valdani threads, it's almost like a very lightweight pearl cotton. Um, but you pull it, you stitch it exactly as you pull it off the skein. Um, so it's a little bit thicker than just stitching with two strands of DMC or any other floss. But it's not so thick where it is unmanageable. It actually has fantastic coverage on 28 count. It's a little bit thicker than a sulky weight thread. It's fantastic coverage. However, and I just watched the Sunshine Stitchers video this morning um, and Gary was talking about his experience with the threads. I do agree with him. They, they are fantastic to work with. Um, but I don't know what type of magical needle he's using. He said he didn't use any type of special needle and didn't have any problems. Um, I was about to say flossing the, th the thread. Threading the needle. He didn't have any problems threading the needle. I had a hard time threading my needle with this floss. But in all honesty, I do believe I was using a size 26. Or maybe my um, size 25 tulip needle. So I had to switch over to a size 24 needle, um, which I typically don't work with, but I'm able to thread the needle um, much easier with a needle threader. So that's my experience with that. But once you get it threaded, I don't have any problems with it. it it's wonderful to work with. And it travels quite easily. Um, so for that reason, I keep this project um, in my car as a travel project or um, lunchtime stitching. I haven't really been stitching on it during um, lunch or if I take a lunch at work because work's been really crazy lately. I'll be lucky if I even take a lunch break. Um, and that's just the nature of the business that I'm in at this time of year. So... Um, if I do have time to do that, I'll stitch on this at lunch or this is my travel project. And that's how I plan to show it some love, um, some ongoing love. 
So that said, that is Rosewood Manor. And if you give me a second, I will show you the actual pattern, the design rather, because I don't know why I put this in the other bag, but that is Autumn Quakers. So I've done this top part here, half of this leaf, that one's done, and I'm working on this motif right here. And I think I did this one too. I found it really interesting that Shelia of the Sunshine Stitchers is going down the left side of her pattern. Um, that's an interesting way to start. I know one person started in the middle. Well, not one person, but one that I've seen started in the middle. But I started in the upper left-hand corner, as I typically do, and I'm just kind of working my way around, but I am trying to focus on finishing one motif at a time. So that's my plan of attack. And I have one last whip to show you and I was so happy to bring this back out because I hadn't worked on it in quite some time um, and that is Esther's Waves by Northern Needlework Expressions so this is the specialty stitch pattern and these Jessica hearts right here easily are the hardest specialty stitch that I've ever done. Not to say that they are difficult, they are something you really have to pay attention to and I had to practice. I remember when I first started it, I had to practice a few times to really get the hang of it and understand what I was doing. The mistake that I made was when I put this project down, I stopped like right here, halfway through this motif. And when I picked it back up, what I really should have done is finish this entire band because trying to remember how to do the motifs when I stopped in the middle of this one was very difficult for me. Um, I just couldn't get it together. I messed up. I finally got it together and I'm looking at it now and I see mistakes that I made, but you know, I'm not, I'm not going back through that specifically in this one right here. This one is a little bit, it's like these are nice and plump and this one is on a diet. It's a little bit yeah, but I'm not taking it back out because I've already taken like these two. I did them and then had to frog both of them. Um, there was a lot of frogging and I was, I'm honestly, I was concerned about running out of floss, which I know I won't, but that's my concern and also about damaging the fabric. So this one looks a little bit different, but if I didn't tell you, I don't know if you would have noticed um, or Maybe you did, but even once it's completed, I don't think anybody's going to zoom and be like, what happened to that one here? And if they do, who cares? Um, I just wasn't willing to take that one out again. So that is, this is band one, this is band two, and then each one, each band of specialty stitches is separated by these bands of Jessica stitches. Um, which is, as you can see from the, the pattern, why it is called Esther's Waves. So I will see if I have, I believe I have the pattern. I know I have the pattern printed out. Um, let see if I can easily pull out a copy of it to show you so I don't have to insert a picture. And I can. That's Esther's Waves. So the original pattern called for um, the rainbow colorway, which seems to be her thing, Nicole's thing when she does these band samplers. They seem to go in a rainbow colorway. And I like colors other than the, the rainbow colorway. So I, I, the last band sampler I did um, from Northern Expressions Needlework, I completely changed up the colors and I did the same here. So I chose my own colors from Fiberlicious Yummy Threads. I believe it's the Peacock Thread Sampler. I think that's what it's called. Um, but it's blues and greens and purples and teals. Um, a few bit videos back, I actually went through all of those colors and I chose my own beads to coordinate with those colors. Um, and that's how I came up with the colors that I chose. Um, so the thread pack came as is, I didn't choose the colors separately on Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. Like I said, I believe it's called the Peacock Thread Pack. And then I just went on um, 
I don't remember if it was fusion beads or fire mountain gems to choose my own beads. And that's where I am with that. So I'm going to keep working on this one. I started working on it on June, August 18th. Yeah. Yeah, it was August 18th because that's when I stopped working on the Rosewood Manor style continuously. I'm so shiny. Um, I started working, picking this back up again on August 18th and I will probably stay, oops, stay on this one until September 1st. I don't know if I'm going to do a two week or three week.